Hello and welcome to another Demis Helen tutorial. This video we're going to look at how I've built this Synthin UHE Hive and then we're going to look at the inserts here on the channel and see how I've developed the sound and shaped it into what it is needed to be. Uh, I've avoided making it overly bright from the synth itself so I'll show you that before I show you it with the inserts on. Uh, I'll have a quick walk through and then I'll put the inserts. So this is the sound we're going for. Now this sound is generated by both oscillators, both on saw wave, both on unison 4. Uh, one set to minus one octave and one normal, so it gives you that kind of classic dead mouse sound. Uh, and then the oscillators are both routed through to filter 1 here, not going through filter 2 at all. And it's on low pass 24, cut off down, uh, and that's the general sound. Uh, so the actual pluckiness is added here with the amp uh, 1 and amp mod here and then the mod envelope here to control how much the pluckiness comes through when the cutoff's down. So if we play it and just alter this, you can see that is ultimately controlling the sound of the synth and what um, how short it is basically. Uh, and that's set to gate, both of them are set to gate. Uh, the amp is just basically the AS, uh, ADSR and that is shaping the sound into a nice plucky sound so it's not too long. And then the mod is actually helping control how much and how the sound is shaped when it goes through the amp, the mod envelope here to control the cutoff. So if we turn this down, there is effectively nothing being let through. And then I get it to the point where I want it and I like it about there. And that is also linked to this mod matrix and it's just on this first channel. So AMP1 here is linked to the cutoff and the decay. So the cutoff and the decay here. Uh, and what that's doing is effectively making it less, it's making it more plucky, but it's giving it a bit of a deeper tone. So if you listen to what I'm on about, I'll switch it off here. So it's removing a little bit more. And the reason for that is so I can get it a little bit deeper when the cutoff goes down because usually it's uh, a little bit too bright still. So that just helps control a little bit more cutoff down below where it's actually set here. And the decay is actually increasing essentially when you turn the cutoff up. So it gets a longer note. Uh, as you can hear, it's not very bright. The reason for that is the inserts are going to take over and create the brightness. I don't want to make it overly bright and over-processed when it gets outside of the synth. So let's have a look at the effects. So we've got it set to normal up here. We've got dirty and clean, but we've uh, I've just kept it to normal. Um, we've put distortion, delay, EQ, and reverb. Now the distortion is set to soft clip, which I think is standard, um, mix fully up, and then I've just adjusted the tone and the amount to give it a nice overall thicker sound, uh, make it sound a bit wider. Um, the delay is set to uh, eighths but dotted, uh, which gives you that background sound. Um, it helps to make it sound a little bit more bouncy. It sounds a little bit amateurish uh, now, but once it's mixed in with the rest of the stuff, it uh, it kind of gets put into the background a little bit more, but it adds to a little bit of depth. Um, and I've set that using a high pass, so we're only letting the higher frequencies through. We're not letting the lower ones. Um, the EQ is, obviously you can see I've reduced the highs, increased the mids, um, and I think there's a little bit of extra bass on there just controlling the frequencies. Then the reverb here, uh, where are we? Up here, I've just set it to kind of the huge sound, uh, set the tone and the dampness here, um, just, to, just to taste and along with the mix. And the width is fully up to give it that wider sound I can get out of the synth itself. So that makes it sound very dry. The reverbs instantly put it in a space. You can't really tell too much that there's reverb there, but it does widen the sound. It goes very centralized when you turn it off. 
Okay, uh, and that is it within this synth. Uh, you can find that in the link down below. Uh, it's obviously going to work in UHE Hive. Apologies that if you don't have it, um, but it is there for the people that do. Um, so outside of the synth, we have these inserts. So let's just listen to it in context now with everything involved. I've purposely taken this synth out because uh, I don't want to confuse things. Okay, and now if we turn the inserts on, I'll turn them on halfway through the melody and you can hear the difference. Uh, I'm just going to adjust the volume here for you so that get a bit louder. And on. Okay, so you can see it's become a lot tighter and it has a much nicer sound. It sounded really dull and non-bright obviously and now in context with the rest of the song it's suddenly not clashing with the bass line and the kick drum so let's take a look at the inserts so the first insert is an EQ obviously so I've rolled off the bass up to the 44 Hertz mark that is where it visually looked like it needed rolling off um, I've just give it a bit of a cut here. I just wanted to get rid of some of the lower mids and then just done a couple of boosts there to give it its brightness. Helps those top notes stand out a little bit. The bits that are going do do do. All right. Um, and then moving on to add some substance to it, I've put it through Saturn. Uh, you can choose any distortion. And I know I've put distortion on the synth itself, but I wanted a little bit more control in terms of multibands. Uh, I've only got two here so far, um, but just to get the general sound, I've used just the warm tape. It's just the initial preset that comes in, the default setting. Um, I've split it in two for now. The bases are doing nothing. I don't want to alter them at all. Uh, and then I've just altered the tones on uh, the mids and the treble and then the presence. So as you can see there. And uh, I've not altered anything else there. It's been a while since I did this actual uh, tutorial preparation. So if we listen to the sound without that. So that's helping bring out some of the sharper ends and that's all down to the presence and treble mainly. see what's happening there it's making uh, making it a little bit brighter um, so I'm not necessarily distorting it I'm just adding some brightness a bit of saturation um, and then we have the built-in room reverb now I've put the room the reverb time and size up to maximum uh, the mix down to force really I would put this into a send effects channel uh, which will happen later on, which will give you that reverb on and off effect. Uh, if you don't know what I mean, there's a video linked just here to the how to add uh, sidechain reverb to your sound. Um, it it kind of fills in the gaps to so when the synth stops, it returns this huge room, room reverb. It's very common in the modern trance at the moment. So... All I've done is controlled the highs and the lows. I don't want any low whatsoever. Very little mid. And then I just ended up with just having the highs coming through. So if you just listen. Very slightly. So just so you know what you're listening to. So it just keeps that tail going a little bit longer, but it's mixed so very gently into the actual sound. Uh, you can't notice it, but it, again, the reverb is putting it into a space that is otherwise not there in your track. So if you just bypass it. So it adds a little bit of width and later on in processing when it comes to the compressor um, which will start to squash your peaks and bring the lows up it'll start emphasizing the reverb a little bit more and along with that term reverb uh, sidechain it will really work in tandem quite nicely 
So uh, let's have a look at the next bit. Uh, kickstart, so that's just giving it a bit of side chain. So that's just uh, the style of the track. That's all down to the user and how you want the track to sound. Um, and then just before this tutorial hour was recorded, I added Sausage Fattener in there to just give it a bit more oomph um, because it has a different way of processing sound and it's it's fat, obviously. Uh, so I've reduced the gain a little bit and added some fatness. So let's just listen to what it did sound like before I put this on. So it wasn't too great, as you can hear. It sounded satisfactory at first, and then it just needed that bit more oomph. And that's emphasizing that reverb in the background a little bit more as well, uh, some after processing. Um, and then just standard, I've done a final tweak here, rolled off again, so around 69. Um, and then just control some of these frequencies. I wanted to boost the upper mids to make the sound cut through in that section, because that's where the synths really need to sit. Uh, it sounded a little bit drowned out when that wasn't there. So let's just listen again and remove. There's also a major volume redu reduction here because um, Sausage Fattener kicked out a lot of sound. So it was uh, just controlled by turning that down. So it's hard to tell what the difference is, uh, but if we if we just gel this up. Okay, as you can see, there's not much detail here, so I've just boosted a bit more here, just to add a little bit more presence in there to work alongside the earlier, uh, what's it called? Uh, Fab Filter Saturn distortion. Uh, as you can see, there is no compressor on there and the reason for that is it is going through a leads bus so when I add more leads in there is a second lead so far it will go through the bus and they'll be all compressed together to gel them uh, so let's have a quick look at that what's happening so default setting I've set it to bus uh, and I've set the knee to nearly full softness um, and then just adjusted the threshold um, with these three settings here now this is just down to how I want the sound to be generated. So if we've got a 1.8 ratio there with a 10 millisecond attack. So it's still pretty fast. It looks like it's slow there. It's still pretty fast, but it's letting um, the compressor come in a little bit slower than it would instead of it just being really harsh on the mark. And then the release is instantaneous. Um, and that's it. That's, that's all there is. Um, so if you listen to two other synths, the other synth to make two, which is this one. Okay, and we send this one to leads. Uh, and then we bypass this, you should hear a bit of a difference. So what I can hear is the original sound that we've just been looking at is poking through quite a lot and the other one that's softer is not being given a chance to show its dynamic range. So this is letting more of the softer one come through whilst pushing the other one back, but it's, it's more gluing it together. Um, but in my ears, that's what I can hear. It's controlling it down a little bit more and helping the lower end reverb of the second synth come through a little bit more. So I'll bypass again and giving it a more fuller sound. So it's obviously not finished, but you can see the, the general idea of where the track is going. Um, and once you hear everything in context and get that synth in there as well. So you can hear where it's going. Uh, the kick is in dire need of attention. Uh, it's, it's, I've not got where I want it to be. As you can see, I've reduced the volume heavily here, and that's not really the way to go about things. So I'm gonna control it a little bit better. Uh, it's just put in there to get the general idea of how the track is going to be paced. Um, then we do have a, set, a, set, a third melody here.
there's all it's just generating ideas i'm trying to get the general sounds that's going to be the beginning and then we're going to have this bit here So there is plenty in the works to get this track going, uh, whether it gets abandoned or not, but I thought it was a good idea to show you how the synth had been created and just give you the chance to have the preset as well. So thank you very much for watching. Um, if you haven't already, hit subscribe, hit the bell so you know when I'm uploading, and also hit me up on Facebook because that's where I spend most of my time now, um, and then I do post to Instagram and Twitter as well. So thank you again for watching, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.